what I'm mainly going to be talking about is antipsychotics. And where I think TDM in psychiatry's role is really expanding is in using therapeutic drug monitoring for antipsychotics as well as antidepressants. So I'm going to focus on clozapine because that's where I've been sort of looking into it for the past couple of years. But the scope is not limited to clozapine. I am not going to give this audience a pharmacology lecture, but clozapine's importance to me as a clinician is that it's the only antipsychotic since chlorpromazine, the first one, that has clearly and consistently showed better efficacy in controlling positive psychotic symptoms. So for us, for, for me as a clinician, clozapine we kind of look at as a silver bullet. It's for patients who have not responded to other drugs. One might ask why keep it for patients who have not responded to other drugs when it's more efficacious. So that's because it has some really, really serious adverse drug reactions. Now both antipsychotics and antidepressants as classes, they act on multiple receptors in a person's brain and they all have ranging from mild to pretty severe adverse reactions complicated by the fact that they may not come immediately because these are medications that you typically give for long periods of time. So these drug reactions may be seen much later also. But even in this class, clozapine has some life-threatening complications like agranulocytosis and myocarditis. It has a very high risk of seizures. These are the slightly more rare adverse reactions, but what definitely happens with every patient is they gain a lot of weight. Most of them end up in a metabolic syndrome. It's very, very sedative. So for a multiple reasons, clozapine is something we hold for drug-resistant psychotic disorders. So let me define, is that a population that any of us really need to care about? Drug-resistant psychotic disorders. Psychotic disorders have a lifetime prevalence of around 3 to 4% in every population studied across the world. Out of these 3 to 4%, for schizophrenia, which will be like, say, 1%, one third of them will end up in drug resistance. For the rest, which is bipolar, it's closer to 20%. So this is a significant number of patients that we're looking at. And clozapine is something that actually my center in CMC, we're giving it a lot because we are a tertiary care referral center. We get more drug resistant patients than others. It's not been very well defined. So when I was a postgraduate, clozapine was taught to me as there's no clear maximum dose. You keep giving it till the patient tolerates it. If the patient has symptomatic improvement, keep giving it. Um, there, it has been more standardized now. So what is considered a standard dose of clozapine is 300 to 600 milligrams, right? And that's targeting a therapeutic con concentration of, a trough concentration of 350 to 600 nanograms per ml, okay? Which was also defined fairly late. Till like maybe, f till 10 years ago, definitely there was no upper limit that had been defined for clozapine. So keeping this in mind, clozapine as a special case in psychiatry. I started during as a pandemic project, I started sort of co collating all the clozapine patients I have in, I had in the department over, over the past few years. And I'll freely admit this was a fishing expedition. I didn't really have a clear hypothesis in mind when I started collecting the data. I just wanted to see. I felt we had more patients on clozapine than most other centers. And what just jumped out from me, uh, out at me f from the data was that around 20% of our patients had seizures on clozapine, which was the rate that I had mugged up in my textbooks a few years ago for my exam was 3%. And I couldn't figure that out. Why, were, why was one in five of the patients I started on clozapine getting a seizure? Most of these seizures were well controlled with valproate, but a seizure in itself is a pretty serious CNS event and in itself has a chance of all sorts of complications. So when I was looking at that, out of this group of around 230 patients that I had in this retrospective cohort, 
I had serum clozapine assays because that's where I was really lucky because I was working in CMC and our and our department there the clinical farm department has had clozapine assays though they were not that frequently used during my training because we didn't know which concentrations we were really targeting we had clozapine assays for around 50 of these patients and i noticed that these clozapine assays were kind of high so if i take the range as 350 to 600 many of them were above 600 though none of the doses were above the standard dose and in fact many of the doses were below the standard dose we were giving less than 300 mg so that's when i went and i tried to find out what are the data is there on clozapine levels in india and i came up with two papers because that's it that's all the data that was there on clozapine levels in india was from two papers There was one in 2013 that was done from my department, which looked at clinical predictors of serum clozapine levels. But in 2013, there was no clear serum therapeutic range for clozapine defined, so they could not really look at people going above or below the therapeutic range. They just looked at the assay as a continuous outcome, and they saw what all influenced that, and they said, "Hey, males, your sex influences the clozapine assays a lot." females have higher assays if you smoke you have lower assays if you are on valproate you have higher assays that's all that the first paper gave me the second which was in 2020 and had come out just around a year before i was like looking at this data was from nemhans a cross sectional study and they had looked at around 140 patients and they had done a little bit more detail in it by that time they had a therapeutic range also and this is one of the two papers that i found at the time that suggested that indians need much lower doses of clozapine than that in the west so the title of that paper was actually do indian patients with schizophrenia need half the recommended clozapine doses to achieve therapeutic serum concentrations so i'm saying this was around 3 to 4 years back and that was it there were those two points of data from india on this drug which is very toxic and which we are giving to a lot of people so based on that i had put out this paper in which the one the main thing i was reporting was just the the prevalence of seizures and seizures and other adverse events i found i also said hey for 50 of these people i have an assay that assay is pretty high I think that explains why the seizure rate is so high because amongst the clozapine related adverse events seizures are dose related a granulocytosis is not this cohort had precisely the amount of a granulocytosis the textbooks had taught me to expect but almost six times the amount of seizures that i was supposed to expect so tying it all together i had suggested that hey looking at this other data also we're giving standard to lower than standard doses of clozapine but achieving supra therapeutic levels and our patients are clinically having adverse events because of them so since then um one of the nicest things that happened is the dr de leon who's the first author of this reached out and said hey i'm really glad someone is putting out some data on this because i've been trying to tell indian doctors for years that we need more data on this and he mailed me and he said it was good work from your side which i really appreciated he released a guideline for clozapine titration based on ethnicity because clozapine amongst many many other psychiatric drugs is well known to have inter individual and inter ethnic variations in its metabolism as i suspect to many many drugs because these inter ethnic variations are based on gen genotypes of the cyp system so he gave a um, an international guideline for clozapine titration which suggested that for asians the doses should be 175 to 300 mg big shift from 300 to 600 mg of the normal uh, dosing guidelines however this was basically an expert consensus guideline there are very there is very little data from asia 
Asians are clumped together here. So most of the data that they even did use for this guide, these guidelines are from East Asia. They're mostly from Japan, South Korea, um, one, one paper from Singapore. So can South Asians be clubbed with East Asians is kind of unclear. We don't really know. From that same Nimhans cross-section study, it's, uh, that's Suhas et al., they had extrapolated from the CD ratios which they found, which were almost double of Caucasian samples, that is concentration to dose ratios. So they had extrapolated from that and said that the minimal daily doses should range from 120 mg for a female non-smoker to 238 mg for a male smoker. They didn't have female smokers in their sample, so they couldn't really give any guideline on that. So the, I'm just laying in front of this audience of clinical pharmacologists just how much data Indian psychiatrists have to go on, actually, to make, guide, to make decisions for individualized medicine in the 21st century. So just last week, actually, <laughs> we finished this thesis for one of my MD students with Dr. Ratna Prabha in which we did another cross-section study because we wanted to see if, if were these individual samples which had similar values, was it just by chance? I wanted to actively see from my center something I had sort of accidentally picked up in the retrospective cohort. So we did a cross-section study and we looked at trough levels of clozapine, we looked at adverse reactions, and we found shockingly similar results to my retrospective cohort. 18, almost 20% of the patients had seizures. More than half were supra-therapeutic in the serum assay, despite more than half getting less than 300 mg, so getting less than the standard doses that are being prescribed. So in that sample of 84 patients, again extrapolating from CD ratios, we suggested these as the dose ranges for because sex and smoking status very consistently and very strongly influences clozapine levels. So in these four categories, however, this sample also has one female smoker. So that's not really a population we have too much data on. So I had thought I would divide this talk into two aspects. One was the academic aspect or the research aspect of what clinical pharmacology and TDM can do for me you can all make my life much easier in the OPD. I would really, really like to treat my patients without giving them unnecessary side effects. And there really, really isn't much baseline, simple data, pharmacological data for us to go on. To illustrate this, there's a clinical case which was who was in the ward, and I'm still following up on an outpatient basis, and it was in the ward maybe a couple of months ago. The 30-year-old man with a very, very drug-resistant schizophrenia and nicotine dependence. He had shown no response to, you name it. I think we had tried basically anything that was available on the market on him. And he had shown a partial response to clozapine. He got admitted at the beginning of this year for around two months in our ward with a worsening of his symptoms, which was getting very difficult for his elderly patient parents to manage. At the same time, he had a, a pretty strong, I mean, even these 20 to 30 cigarettes per day is an approximation. He was a chain smoker. He was just smoking through the whole day. He had COPD with multiple acute exacerbations. So we had admitted him into the ward both to try and get his symptoms better under control and to de-addict him from nicotine because that was also like a, a big health concern. The issue being that smoking really affects clozapine levels. So someone who's smoking this much, their clozapine levels are likely to be pretty low. So how do I on one hand tinker with, this, with the dose of the antipsychotic while I'm actively reducing something else that will also affect the levels? So this was at admission, so let's say he was on 20 to 25, though again, that's a bit of an approximation. We never really could figure out how many he was smoking in a day. He was on 450 mg of clozapine at that time. So well within the 
defined traditional dose range. His trough clozapine assay was 55 nanograms per ml. The therapeutic range is 350 to 600. Okay. A BPRS is a symptom scoring that we do just to have an just to have a numerical estimate of how severe the illness is. So you can use the BPRS score as an estimate of how severely ill this patient was at that point of time. So based on that, we initially increased the doses to higher than we would normally. So we made it 600 mg. Clozapine assay was still not within the therapeutic range. We increased it further till we went to 800 mg. It did. It was still not there, but we were also simultaneously had been managing to convince him to, st to start coming down on his cigarette use. So we thought perhaps with that, we'll reach it. And then that that's exactly what happened. So on 800 mg, which is a fairly scary dose for a clinician, and 12 cigarettes, this man started go go going within the therapeutic range of clozapine. And the last assay I've done for him, now he is not taking cigarettes at all. It has crossed into the supra threshold. So I've actually reduced it. Last week, after um, over two weeks, I reduced the dose to 600 mg. And we've done another assay. And we're seeing what that's going to be. I also want, you want to point out the BPRS score column. I feel this really helped. Without the assays being there, without me being able to rely on that for my dose adjustments, I would not have had the courage to give him 800 mg, which is a very high dose of this drug. So my talk is pretty simple. Uh, I think my talk is just like a call <laughs> to this audience of clinical pharmacologists. Indian clinicians need pharmacological data from India. It was really shocking to me to realize that none of the dosing ranges of any of the things that I prescribe, any of the things I teach my postgraduates are based on Indian data. And if this one drug, this one drug has now opened Pandora's box for me. If this one drug's dosing range is absolutely unreliable from the textbooks, is any, how many do I have to study? So, we're, so Dr. Ratna Prabhu and I are doing Risperidone next. I want to look at antidepressants as well. We need to establish dosing ranges for the Indian population. And the last point I'm going to make is, so till now we have three points of data on clozapine. All three are from South India, two from Vellore, one from Bangalore. We don't really have, we've not explored if within India, I'm talking about is are Asians ethnically homogenous? Unlikely. Are Indians ethnically homogenous in how they handle drugs? I think also unlikely, but who knows? We don't know. We have to look at that as well. Thank you.